was somewhat amazed to see. I'm going to grab a seat here. I'll go with the smooth seat. Uh, any of you know, you probably know I follow politics a little bit. Uh, I love uh, watching to see what the, the president's doing in Congress and all of the, uh, the different state senates. And uh, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's a neat thing. Actually, I had an opportunity this week to, it was a week and a half ago, to sit down with uh, uh, one of uh, our state senators and talk to him about politics and, and all kinds of real neat things. So it's just a little hobby of mine. I was kind of fascinated. Um, you guys know we're broke, right? The country mm -hmm. broke. Did you get that message? Yeah, we've got a credit card, and someday it's going to come due, and probably here pretty soon. Um, I was I was amazed that the president of the United States, and this is all the presidents, um, but last year we spent over a billion dollars in entertaining guests to people that would come to the White House. I mean, a billion dollars in entertaining. Now, I don't want to gig this president because all of the presidents do it. And, and, and you can understand that. I mean, we want to, I, I, I guess, host things for different state or for different governments when they come. We want to, um, to meet them and greet them and have something for them. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of this is security and everything. But I thought a billion dollars. In, in entertain. Can you imagine, just for a moment, I mean, let's, I want to kind of spiritualize this for a second. If God called up the White House and said, uh, hey, next Tuesday, uh, week from Tuesday, I was going to be in the neighborhood, <laughs> and I just wanted to stop by and, you know, say hey to everybody. Hey. What would we as a country do for God? I, I imagine you know, in my spare time, that's what I do. I just imagine things like this. I would think that we want to have a party for it. Huh? You, I mean, it's God. He spoke everything into existence. At least you could have a little celebration for, for God. You would, think, you would think that the president would probably get on the horn, the phone, and call a couple of guests. What would the guest list look like? Well, knowing the mentality of our nation as a whole, I can't just imagine that just the Christians would be called. I think that all of the religious leaders would be called, right? You'd have the Pope. Okay? You can't have a party without the Pope. Um, he'd bring his Pope bill, and, and there'd be... That guy, he, he's wild. He's a crazy Pope. Um, you'd have one of the Grahams... Right? You can't have a party without one of the grams. They've been there for a while. I'm thinking that the younger son would probably be there because uh, Billy, he's, he's, just not, he's just not doing very well. But if God's there, maybe maybe Billy would be there. Um, you have the, 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 who's the leader of the Muslims in the country today? I don't know. Anybody know? One of them guys, probably not a girl, um, <laughs> just, just throwing that out there. I don't know. Um, I would say one of the apostles from the Mormon church would be there. Uh, all of the religious leaders would go there. And hopefully while they were there, they'd find out who exactly was right and who was wrong. So uh, I have an idea who it is, but that's just me. Um, I, the heads of states would be there. The, the different governors would be there. Um, the, I was, some of the senators would be there. I would think for the most part... The top dogs in all of, all of the different aspects of business and religious life and, and the world leaders would be there for the party to celebrate God. My question is, would any of you get an invite? No. <laughs> if you did not know this, you people, and, and me too, you're, and this is not very motivating, 
you're like bottom rung people. You know that, right? <laughs> I, me too, okay? <laughs> Terrorists look at me, I don't even I don't have my eyeballs on me. She's like, I ain't no bottom rung person. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> you just don't know it yet. So uh, you you're you're all, I mean, some of you not even bottom rung people, you're fighting for the bottom rung. And that's that, that's okay. That's who you are. So you probably don't get meetings with governors. Has anyone ever had a meeting with the governor? Got him out. It's Tamron. <laughs> Pick up the phone. Got him on speed dial. Got him. You're probably not going to get in an invite. That they said the president won because he cares about you. He doesn't even know your name. Come on. He don't care about you. Well, you know, every four years they care about you. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yeah. You're bottom rung people. You don't get it. Well, I guess let me refer, let me ask this question: Would you even want it done? You're saying no. Is it because it's because of the the governors and stuff? I mean, God's there. You want, how would you like to see God? I mean, you can just have your own little corner back here, like your own little table, Chris McKittrick's table. What? Huh? No, did I say Chris McKittrick? Chris McClay. Uh, sorry. Chrissy, how's that? <laughs> Chrissy and Josh eat steak mm. and the little baby. Mm. I would hope that you'd want to go see God, right? Nobody else. Huh? <laughs> I know, it's just like, oh, I know. That's not how kings work it, though. You're probably not going to get it in life. But the good thing is, it wouldn't really be the kings doing the inviting, right? It'd probably be God doing the inviting, right? I mean, I, I'm president and it's high up there, but God's got to at least be two levels above him, right? At least. Mm -hmm. Funny thing is, a couple thousand years ago, God did come. And in like big God-like fashion, he actually sent invitations out. And he did. He invited kings. Yeah, he did. I mean, um, the virgin will be with child was a message given to who? King. He invited all the religious leaders too. Um, I mean, all the prophets kind of talk about it. Uh, from the very beginning, in all the books, you can, you can find it. So, there was, there was an invite. Yet, on the day that he came, there were no kings there. On the day that he came, there wasn't a, there wasn't a parade. There wasn't those little party favors. <laughs> Nothing for God. In fact, the ones that came were bottom rung people. Some of them the dredges of society. Do you know that? This is the the nativity scene, and we're going to be decorating it. I've looked all over. I thought we had a nativity scene here. I was going to build a nativity scene for you, but it's okay. We've got a picture of a nativity scene up here. Um, one of my favorite Christmas decorations, that with the Santa Claus in the house, at the outhouse. Have you seen that one? That one's one of my favorites, and I, I like the uh, I like the woman bending over backwards, you know, upside. That's not a Christmas deck, but it's one of my favorite decorations, and I like the nativity scene. Those are like my three. So at my house, that's what I'm going to have. If I ever get my Christmas you decorations up. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I don't put we're, Christmas we're just juxtaposing your favorite decorations. I know, I know. It's, I'm weird. You know, if I put Christmas decorations up, it'd be to line before they come down. I still got my one Halloween decoration up. It's an orange light bulb. So I'm, my Christmas decorations this year, if I make it to Lowe's, is going to be a red and a white light bulb. Ooh. It's not that I don't like Christmas, it's just that I'm 
doing stuff. Uh, I have not made it to your house. You're like the Clark Griswolds, aren't you guys? All right, everybody go by Tim King's house. He's like Clark Griswold. He's got every staple to his. I'm going to go there tonight. And remind me. Well, don't steal my Santa outhouse because I have that. Is it? You got that? <laughs> Some of you in this room, we talked about it like 
you've had God-sized opportunities come your way, and you tell me about these God-sized opportunities, I'm saying, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to pray about it. And you pray about it for six months. Do you really pray about it? Just, I just want to know. When you tell me you're praying about it, and it's like months later, are you still, are you really praying? I think some of you are lying to me. But that's, that's a different sermon right there. You said, okay. Uh, do you think it, it even crossed your mind that, that the culture that she, in, in our culture, if you are a teenage girl and you're pregnant, you're on MTV. In their culture, you, they didn't have MTV. Remember, Video Killed the Radio Star was in the 80s, not the zeros. They would scorn her. The family would kick her out of the family. The guy she was engaged to, back then you was engaged to, uh, 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 when you were engaged, you actually have a ceremony, then you were engaged for about a year, no sexual relationships whatsoever, and, and then at the end of the year, if you, if, if you were found still to be purity, that's when they, they, they you know, hook up, or whatever it's called. They would seal the deal. I don't know. And the uh, fiancé would just abandon her. There was a good chance she'd spend the rest of her life <coughs> single mom. Okay. She could have been stoned to death. You know that? Okay. <coughs> Very naive, don't you think? But it was her naivete that earned her a spot in the nativity. That's, I worked days on that. <laughs> you got no brilliant smart man. Would you like a spot with God? Here's what he said. This is Jesus, the Word who became flesh, God with us, Emmanuel, Lord of Lords, spoke everything into existence. There is nothing that exists that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Him. I mean, He is this. This is what Jesus said. He said, if I tell you the truth, you can take it to the bank. He says it's the truth, it's the truth. Get this, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The faith will get a spot next to Jesus. Do you have the faith like a little child? Isabella believes everything I tell her. Everything. Isabella, I'm brilliant. You are smart, Dad. <laughs> She's so smart. He's the smartest. As she grows older, she learns the truth. <laughs> <laughs> You're not smart yet. Do you obey God like a little child? Love your enemies. When you say love, you mean like hug them until they pass out? <laughs> give a tenth before taxes or after taxes. Don't matter, most of you only give them a tooth. Love your neighbor as Jesus loved you. That's hard, isn't it? I mean, faith of a little child. But that's okay because there are more people there. And then it's it. You see, who else is there? Joseph. Joseph is there. Now, if, if you know the Bible story very well, there, it, it, in the very beginning of the whole the whole Matthew account, the Luke account, there was a good question if, 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 if Daddy was even going to be there at this time. Because Daddy, Joseph, got the news that, well, he's the guy who had to have a straight face. He's the guy that Mary had to go up to and say, Joseph, check it out. One, I'm pregnant. Surprise. Two, I'm still a virgin. Don't worry. Three, it's a miracle. <coughs> Do you think Joseph was a little skeptical of this? 
It says that Joseph was a righteous man, and he decided in his heart that this is what he was going to do. This is before this, this shot here, this, 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 this capturing of the nativity scene. It says that Joseph decided to divorce this woman. Remember, they got married a year before they actually consummated the marriage. They got married right there. They made a commitment and said that, you know, on this day, if you're pure, boom, this is, this is forever. But if something broke the deal, it's over. So what he decided to do was he was just gonna he was just gonna stay married and then he was gonna divorce her privately, secretly, if you will. Why? He's gonna try to protect her. Here's a young girl who broke his heart, and he was gonna protect her. Do you think that's why he earned the spot in the nativity scene? Nobody earns a spot in the nativity scene. Let me just let me just stress that. And nobody earns a spot next to God. We don't do something and God says, you can be around me. No, we are obedient to him and that's come to me. So why did Joseph get in the nativity scene? was a skeptic, but an honest skeptic. Have you ever met a dishonest skeptic? You know what a dishonest skeptic is? Here's what a dishonest skeptic is. I, I'm out there, I'm preaching the gospel, telling people about Jesus, and you'd be surprised how many people out there have reasons not to believe. Hey, guess what? 2,000 years ago, this woman, a virgin, gave birth to a child, and he's Jesus, and he was God, and people out there, I mean, let alone Joseph, they're like, no, 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 no. And then they have reasons and excuses why they don't want to believe. You have people who have reasons and excuses why they don't want to do this thing or, or this thing. I was talking to one of you the other day, says, so, well, somebody had, uh, doesn't come to church anymore because they had a bad experience, and I tried to explain to you that's, a, that's, a, that's an excuse. Right there, because we can always have a reason right there. A dishonest skeptic is somebody who gives you reason after reason after reason why they will not believe or will not come or will not do. But the, the minute you answer the question, and even if they're like, oh, okay, I accept that, they still say, well, I'm not going to come anyway because of this. They're always looking for reasons and excuses not to believe. They're dishonest. They just won't come. Joseph was an honest skeptic in that he had his doubts. But when they were answered, and they were, an angel came to Joseph and said, it's just like Mary said, dude. Joseph sucked it up. said, you know what? I was wrong. Maybe that's why I got a spot. There's hope for me in that because a lot of times I'm just like, love that person, really? They're a bozo God. Did you know it? another reason why Joseph gets a spot. People back then could do math. They could do math. I mean, okay, it was in the winter time that Mary and Joseph promised to be together. But here it is like four or five months later and she's got a belly on her. Somebody is doing it nasty. Now, I don't know if they talk like that. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> but Joseph stayed with her. You know what Joseph did? He took the scorn that was supposed to go to Mary and he embraced it for himself. Because by staying with her, he admitted without saying one word that I was the one who committed the crime against her. He embraced the scorn that was for Mary. 
Do you want to be with God? Take this to the bank. A lot of people out there preach this wealth, health crud. They say, if you come to God, He's going to be fat, happy, and rich, and healthy. It's not promised in the Bible. Some of you may be wealthy. Some of you may be healthy until the day you die, and then you had a sickness. But over the last 2,000 years, Christians have not had it made. In fact, over the last 1,800 years, except for this last, no, wait, for the last 1,900 years since Christ was there, for the most part, all of humanity has been poor, sick and dying. If it was the fact that you were promised health and wealth, then you got a big middle finger from heaven, because that's not what we got. Here's what he promises you, though, this. Anyone who wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. In some countries, in America, that means you'll be laughed at. In other countries, some of you may even live there one day, you could be killed. You want a spot next to God? Jesus says, the student is not above his master. If they persecuted me, and they did, they will persecute you as well. Because of Joseph's willingness to be persecuted, if you will, he gets a spot at the nativity side scene. Mm. People who don't want to are even willing to accept that. The good news is you don't have to. You have every right to be ashamed of Jesus. Jesus says, if anyone is ashamed of me, in my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he, when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the angels. The angels, they were there. Why were the angels there? Some would say that the angels were there because they looked forward to, if there was any creature in the entire world that looked forward to this day, it was the angels. The Bible tells us this, that the angels looked intently to see what the prophets were writing, what the prophets were saying, kind of looked over their shoulders as they were saying it, looked intently to see when the day that Christ would come. They were looking for it. Maybe that's why they were there. Maybe. Maybe it's because it, it, it was a way that God could communicate that all of creation, both the spiritual, the unseen, and, 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 and the invisible, and, and the material, and the seen, could all come together so we could pay homage to this one event when Christ would come to the world. Maybe. But I have a different thought. That was in, it's in Luke chapter 2, real quick. I'm going to read this to you. The angels were there for one reason... And one reason only. No, I don't say only. Because they were the messenger. Luke chapter 2 says this. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, the shepherds. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all of the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavens appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom His favors rest. Do you know what angel means? It means messenger. The angels were there because they were the birth announcement. <clears throat> so true for you too. Did Jesus not say you will be my witness? Did Jesus not promise, and this is a promise to you, brothers and sisters, that you need to, first off, he gave you a command. He says to go, 
Where? Into the entire world. To do what? To baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. What we saw here today was a demonstration of Pastor Lawson's obedience to that command. And he follows it up. He says, teach them everything that I have commanded to you. Then he gives the promise. And truly and surely, I will what? Be with you always. You want a spot next to God in some way, in some fashion. You must, you must, you must be following Him. You must, you must, you must be part of the Great Commission. Either part of the church is part of the Great Commission. You must be obedient. There are too many people who preach their own message, who are going out there, they're building their own kingdom, they're talking about themselves, they build themselves up, and they think that God's promise is, I'll always be with you. No, God called you to follow Him. Messengers, get a spot next to God. Not only them, but the animals. Why the animals? You know who's missing there? The guy who owned the animals. The innkeeper. Why are his animals there, but the guy who owned the animals aren't there? <clears throat> You know the story. Mary and Joseph went up to the inn. It says because there was no room into the inn and there was an innkeeper. Okay? He had already gave it to other people. He said there's no room in the inn. They went into the innkeeper's bar. There are some people who say that. No, 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 no. Let's not be so hard on the innkeeper. I mean, he made a promise to other people. He can't just kick those people out. And he was being very benevolent. He was being very generous. And he gave the bar to Joseph and Mary. Well, I say, couldn't the innkeeper have given up his spot? I mean, if somebody comes up to your house, I mean, how many of you were just sitting on a bus and a pregnant woman comes up to you and you're like, I was here first? <laughs> Better find you another seat. Now you get up, right? Why didn't the innkeeper go out to the bar? I mean, woman giving birth out there, you'd think, well, that's a lot of like to see. Maybe you wouldn't like to see it. But at least afterwards, when the baby's done, he'd come out. You know what I think the innkeeper was? I think he was inconvenienced by Jesus. Because some people, Jesus is an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. it, 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 they don't want to put Jesus in, in the center of their life. They don't want to keep him in, in their place of residence, but they'll keep him in the barn. You know, Jesus to them is, he messed my weekend up. Mm -hmm. He takes away my time during the day. Now when I'm hurting, I'm going to the barn to get Jesus. When everything's going good, I just keep him in the barn with the animals. <laughs> Here's the truth. God deserves to be glorified. Do you know that? God deserves to be worshipped. He deserves, what does that mean to worship? To love Him. He deserves that, that, that all of creation, because He spoke it into existence, it deserves that every knee take a bow and worship Him. But to the one thing He made in His image, He gives them a choice. He says, you don't have to worship me if you don't want to. Why are the animals there? Because the innkeeper refused to. The Bible tells us this. It says, if you will not worship Him, creation itself will. The rocks will sing praises to him. The animals were there because he was worthy. All creation got spot. The innkeeper wasn't there because Jesus, well, take too much time. And the shepherds were there, but not the kings. Why weren't the kings there? You know who shepherds were? Shepherds were the dredge of society. Shepherds were the ex-prisoners. Shepherds were the thieves. Shepherds were the guys who couldn't get a legitimate job, and they got the job as the shepherd. They were the bums of society. That's what they were. They were there, but not the kings. Why not the kings? In fact, the one king who was in, in, in this in the, in the uh, uh, 
uh, what the Matthew tells us is the one king who was there was trying to kill Jesus. See, to some people, Jesus is competition. It's his kingdom or it's my kingdom. Jesus told us that, though, didn't he? He says nobody can serve two masters. If he did, you're going to love one and hate the other. Kings don't come because, well, two different kingdoms. But the shepherds come. Why the shepherds? You know, I think, and, and I, I've talked to a lot of different churches, and I've just, it kind of boggles the mind why they think this way sometimes. I think sometimes the church has this idea of the perfect person to come into their church. It says, well, you know, what is the person that we need to go out and invite to come to our church because they represent what we want to see? We actually, I was part of one church one time that they actually did a study that they said, okay, okay, who is it that we best represent? We, we best represent the middle to upper class college individuals, and that's the people that we're going to target. We're going to invite those people right there. They actually had an idea of the perfect church member, and that's the person they target them. We'll draw kings in. Kings don't come. You know, sometimes we identify our own pride when we put people, sometimes above us, but, but people below us. You realize that when God came down, he, it didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter if he was a king. It didn't matter if he was a boss. It didn't matter if people bowed down to you. God had to come down to your level. And you all fall short of the glory of God. You know why shepherds come? There's just something about being on the bottom rung that's very, very good. And let me tell you what it is. You've been humbled. I'm blessed. I blew a business one time. It was hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. I know I'm a bozo. The only one who will ever get a spot at the base of the major are those who have been humbled. One way or the other. Because you cannot come to Christ with your head held high. Shepherds have been beaten down and they know why the church focuses on upper middle class and they think, you need to find you some shepherds. Find you some people who've been beaten down. You preach the gospel to them. Everybody else won't. Why? Because they just don't fit them all in the church. Humility gets a spot next to the king. And last of all, and years later, the wise men show up. Now, you know that it's the three kings. These three kings, the Lord, that's why I don't sing. They weren't kings. They were wise men. If you talk to a Jehovah Witness, they would say they were evil. Yeah, because they were most likely astrologers. Well, I don't know if the scripture lets us do that with, with the wise men, but they were, they were using the stars to direct them. But it wasn't the stars that told them about Jesus, was it? It couldn't have been, no, because the stars will, the stars are part of creation. The stars testify that there is a God. But when they came to the king, the first thing they did was they thought, hey, there's a king being born. Let's start with the king. He would have got the word by now. So he goes to King Herod, and, and the wise men said, we've come to worship the king of the Jews. Where would they get that king of the Jews? Only in Scripture. Now, I'm, a, I'm in the camp that says that Daniel's writings that was done in a pagan culture stayed there. 
And they were students of Daniel's writing, who did testify about the Son of Man. So they had the scriptures. But what was very interesting is what King Herod did. They said, where, where, we've come to see the king of the Jews. Where is he? And King Herod's like, I don't even know what you're talking about, man. So he goes to the Pharisees and the scribes. And he says, these guys over here, looking at the stars, want to see the king of the Jews. Where's the king of the Jews? What do the scribes do? The scribes do this. They said, oh, they said this. They said, oh, he's in Bethlehem, they replied. For this is what the prophets has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. So it begs the question, why are the wise men there, but not the religious people? Because they both had the scriptures. They both got the announcements. They both got the word that God was here. I submit to you it's this. There are too many people, there are religious people who open up this Bible and they look to see what it is they can get out of it. Maybe it's position. Maybe they think they can earn their way into heaven by learning the rules and the regulations. They see this as a manual to life. Some of you are like, well, it is a manual to life. They see this as a road map on how to behave. Well, some of you say, this is a road map to behave. Then they see this as a way to earning your way into salvation. You can't earn your way into salvation, but they see that as that. And Jesus said to the Pharisees, to the religious leaders, this. He says, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. You study them to see which way, what you could do, what it is that you can do to earn your way up this proverbial religious ladder to earn your way into heaven, you search them, but the scriptures point to me. The king, the wise men are there at the base of the manger because when they went to the scriptures, they were in search of Jesus. You want a spot next to God? Open up the Word of God and look for Christ. Open the door. Excuse me, knock on the door and it'll be open for you. I think it's only fitting that the wise men came last. See, God, He didn't just come and leave. No, no, no. Remember Jesus' promise, I'll be with you always. We get a spot next to God even today. That you earn it, but you get it. If you will humbly come, if you will come with the faith of a child, if you will come and even if you have doubts, recognizing how quickly you will shed those doubts when he gives you the answer. If you will be so in love with him that you can't shut up about it. If you will come recognizing that it's only by grace that you're saved. Only by grace will you ever get a spot next to the eternal King, Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Father, it is. Once a year we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate, um, Christians celebrate and, and reflect on the, on the first advent, the coming of Jesus Christ, the perfect gift to us, John 3, 16, perfect Christmas scripture says that God so loved us that he gave us a gift, and that gift was his son, and whoever believeth in him shall not die, they shall never perish, but they shall have eternal life. It was, he is a free gift 
to us. But it is a gift that we can take or we can abandon. Kings walk away from the gift because it asks too much. Innkeepers walk away from the gift because it's an inconvenience. Prideful people walk away from the gift because they bow to no God. But the invitation is open to all. We humbly come into your presence today. And we take a knee and worship the only true God. It is in the name of the Almighty Jesus Christ, it is in the name of the Almighty Father, in the name of the Almighty Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen. 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 Now a time of invitation.